Badgers have been to 19 straight NCAA tourneys, but they're on the south side of a 500 record right now. A nice home opportunity game for them next with Marquette from America's oh, Dairy God. Land. Coach, quick defensive help. stance. Get in there. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Come on. Nice nice slow, slow, come on. Push, push foot. Come on, bring it While you work foot, your defense, bring it determining <laughs> switch, factors. Switch, switch. Jim, determining factor. Keep it low, Coach. Well, Keep it I low. Mean, Wisconsin, I mean, Ethan Happ is dynamic down low, but now you can double team because you're not knocking down shots. Very important for Wisconsin. Somebody has to knock down some perimeter shots. It's real simple. You knock down shots, Ethan Happ has more room to operate in the paint. Time and space to work down low because that three-point shooting stretches the defense. I'm actually going to say defense. the same as you. I think it's Key Marquette knocks down threes because Wisconsin keeps that defense tight. Rousey, Howard, and Hauser got to combine for 14 threes if Marquette's going to win. That's mathematics, metrics, and data what of about the, the day. No 14 rebounding? threes. Rebounding? No, it's about, for Marquette, they got yeah, no but rebounders. they got to rebound the ball. Marquette's just got to shoot it. They got to make shots. They they got to the defense. They've never rebounded. Come on. <laughs> By the way, Marquette shoots the that, ball. That did not count as your cardio for the day. <laughs> it did not. No. All right. Come I know on. you're breathing heavy, I'm tired. but that's not going to cover it. So things well, we've don't... learned, we've, we've learned slapping the floor, defensive <laughs> stances. We've learned starting walk-ons, no bueno. And we've learned it's all about guard play today. That's it. Guard that's play, it. Play, baby. Anything else right, you guys need up. to know? Game we'll time. be back at halftime. What are we doing here after the goal center? Brian Anderson, defense, Stephen Bardo. Guys. <laughs> All right, guys, you said there'd be no math this early in the game. We are ready to go here. A rivalry matchup at the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. The Marquette Golden Eagles, the Wisconsin Badgers, separated by just 75 miles. They've been playing this rivalry since 1917. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson with the great Stephen Bardo. Great to have you with us. We start today's broadcast with some heavy news for the Wisconsin Badgers. They have trouble in their backcourt. Two guards are not available here today. Kobe King is out with a knee injury, and Demetric Trice is out with a foot injury. So you're talking about a young team in four games. They were two points at the two-minute mark. So they've struggled closing down games with their backcourt in full tact. And so it's going to be very difficult to do something without Demetri Trice and Kobe King in the backcourt. Kobe King was playing some of the best basketball of any Badger before he got hurt. Well, Demetri Trice is on the bench. Kobe King not with the team right now. And this starting lineup for the Badgers as they take on Marquette today. The Badgers are going to go with three guards, Brad Davison, Brevin Pritzel, and Khalil Iverson. You might see Iverson run a little bit of the point with the second unit. And then Steven Marquette. They come in with a record of six and three and a dynamic backcourt. Yeah, one of the best scoring backcourts in the country. You're talking about between Howard Rousey and Hauser. 90 made threes already this season. Longtime rivals, Marquette and Wisconsin. And here we go from the Kohl Center. Badgers coming in four and six, having lost on the road at Temple their last time out after a win against Penn State. Remember, Wisconsin already has two conference games in play. It's Davison with an air ball, and it's out of bounds off of Iverson. It'll be Marquette ball. Interested to see how Marquette's going to guard half. They went on the pass, double teamed him as soon as he caught the basketball. They're going to try to change up looks on him in the post. Howard and Rousey. Rousey back in the starting lineup. And as Coach mentioned during the pregame show, they're going to try to get up a lot of threes, and they've been hitting the threes. They want to score. They want to move the pace. Badgers just the opposite. They want to try to slow it down as best they can. Marquette averaging 84 points a game. Wisconsin averaging just over 66 a game and holding their opponents to just shy of 64. Another takeaway. Marquette on the move with Rousey. Fires a three. And it is down. And Andrew Rousey, the sharpshooter. You're not going to find a team in America that shoots the basketball as efficiently as Marquette. These guys are fun to watch. They space you and make you make tough decisions each time down the floor. Here's Pritzel. And Pritzel with the little reverse. Well, nicely done. Pritzel's one of those guys that can get hot from behind the arc. Wisconsin is hoping he does get his shot going, but he adds a little bit of that element of the drive, and suddenly he could put up some points. Howard in and out with the three. Iverson flying high with a rebound. He's going to have to pick up Marcus Howard from the parking lot. This guy's got unlimited range and a neon green light from his coach to let it fly. 
Davison still wearing that harness with the left shoulder injury. Aline Ford comes up short. And Sakar Anum pulls down the board. Here come the Golden Eagles. Rousey, ball fake inside. Help springs free. Good action there by Marquette. Rousey is an underrated passer. Andrew Rousey, a great scorer. But he had 10 assists in the last game against Vermont. He can really set up his teammates. Ethan Half finally getting a touch. Almost poked away by Help. Here's Iverson. Adams right on him. Tough shot. Difficult angle, but Iverson connects. Yeah, Khalid Iverson's going to have to really be aggressive. He's going to force the issue. When Wisconsin's been successful, they've had multiple scores and not depending on Ethan Half. Iverson now a junior. He and Charlie Thomas, part of that junior class that has not played up to the expectation of the Badgers. Thomas is hardly playing these days. Iverson still in the starting lineup. Adam, shot clock at six. Wow, got it to his right hand and scores. That's the car Adam, when he scores, Brian, that's, that's bonus points for Marquette. They don't really need him to be a scorer, but he's come out aggressive here this afternoon. Adam averages just over six points a game for Marquette. Half runs into the double team. And half will pull a little mid-range. Hauser pulls down the board. That's really the biggest question for Wisconsin. Who's going to be that second scorer? And from the corner, Marcus Howard for three. And timeout, Greg Gard. Marquette, their first true road game. They've come out hot, hit a couple of threes, and they're up six. I saw the change in Rich when we moved into the new house, but having his parents over was enlightening. You don't like my lasagna? No, it's good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> here, blow. Blow on it. You see it, right? Is there a draft in here? I'm telling you, it's so easy to get home insurance on Progressive.com. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. 10 to 4, Marquette off to a good start here at the Kohl Center in Madison. And Rousey setting up. And then Howard knocking it down. That assist by Rousey to help. And then how about Howard shooting at 41% from behind the arc? Knocks down the three. Back in play as Ethan Hat finally gets into the score column. He's going to need a whole lot of half today, Steve, and if, Mark, if uh, Wisconsin is going to have a chance. You're right, and, and I like that time that Ethan Hat didn't wait to see what the defense was doing. He went before the defense could get set. Oh, Howard all the way to the rim with the left That's hand goes Howard. under the basket. See, Wisconsin is, is switching on defense. Marquette is taking advantage of that. The last time you saw Rousey hit help for the dunk, that time Ethan Hat cannot keep up foot speed with Howard. Brevin Pritzel with an air ball from the corner. Rousey handles the ball, runs the point, little crossover, gives it up, help clear some space, can't make the layup, and it ends up in the hands of Howard with a fresh shot clock. Hauser, little ball fake, steps in it. And it's a rebound by Ford. Davison will slow it down. An already beat up backcourt for the Badgers, even more so today. If you're just joining us, two of their main rotation players, including their starting point guard, is out. Dimitri Trice and Kobe King, both not available today with injuries. Iverson, Prinzel kept it alive. Rousey's got it, and on the move, in transition, gives it up. Hannum all the way in. And Marquette with the speed game, taking care of Wisconsin early. I've seen Marquette three times this season. They have not been this sharp to start the game. They are on fire here getting anything they want on the offensive end. You heard a lot more of the rivalry talk from the Marquette side of things than you did the Badger side. The Badgers are dealing with the injuries and they've got problems right now that they're trying to cover. But for Marquette, as half with a nice runner in the lane, snaps a 9-2 Marquette run. I think Marquette, you know, there's no football involved with the Golden Eagles. This is the game. 
as uh, you get into conference play in the Big East. This is the one non-conference game that every Marquette fan looks at as Hauser as gets it inside. The ball is popping right now for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, Marquette's getting anything they want on the offensive end. They're not even being patient with it. They're getting one or two passes, and the defense is breaking down for Wisconsin. Davison posting up Howard. And that's going to be on the floor. And that takes us to a timeout. Foul on Howard. 16 to 8. How about an 11 4 run for the Marquette Golden Eagles? Basketball separated by just 75 miles. Marquette in downtown Milwaukee to Madison, Wisconsin, home of the Badgers. Meeting at the Kohl Center today. How about Buzz Williams, Bo Ryan, and Nigel Hayes at the Bradley Center from a few years back. This goes back to 1917. Stephen, you and I have been uh, honored to be a part of this rivalry for a number of years now. It's one of the best in the game now. These two teams, neither one of them ranked, so it doesn't have the national spice that it normally would but there's no question when they get together there's a lot on the line here uh, every single time and you you called it it doesn't the records don't matter the rankings don't matter all these guys know each other they play against each other in high school they play against each other in the summer there's bragging rights involved tj Schlund, and they're going to check it to see if he got it off in time Schlund is the walk-on that rob and company were talking about in the pregame that is going to get elevated minutes now with the two guards out, King and Trice. T.J. Schlund, we've seen him in practice. This guy can knock him down. Well, you know, Wisconsin is struggling with their confidence, and when you have a guy that comes in like T.J. does, there's no hesitation. Obviously, there's a some time pressure on, on that release. Oh, wow. Oborowski waved it off. Yeah, they're going to wave it off. It looked like... It looked like a zero on the clock. Remember, you go on the zero first. Initially, you're you're supposed to go off the sound, but with arenas being as loud as they are, they have the ability now to check that right away. And so it changes the potential possessions. Normally, you might see it, whether it was off as a two or a three, but when it's a shot clock situation, you go to the monitor right away. And it was off late, so still an eight-point lead. And here's Hauser. And Iverson knocks it out of bounds. That'll stay in the possession of Marquette. Even though Slunt's three didn't count, Brian, the Badgers are struggling with their confidence right now. And anybody that can come in and step up with some confidence like that, that's only going to help. Here's Rousey with a quick pull, and he hits it. Andrew Rousey with a three-pointer. He and Howard are 1-2 in the Big East right now in scoring. Howard averaging 22.4. Andrew Rousey 21.6 points per game. And if you can show me a team that has two better shooters than Rousey and Howard, then I've got a bridge to sell you because these two guys are the best in the country, in my opinion, from deep. And Davidson able to draw the foul. One thing about Rousey and Howard, they are undersized, and so if you're Wisconsin and you've got a guy like Davison, there's a little pushing and shoving there with Rousey and Aaron Mace. So here's the thing. Andrew Rousey and Aaron Mace, who wins that battle? Obviously Wisconsin, because Aaron Mace is coming off the bench. If Andrew Rousey gets a technical here, He's an integral part, second leading scorer in the Big East. He's got to be able to maintain his, his focus and, and not get caught up in that. Double technical between Rousey and Mace. One thing Steve Wojciechowski talked to us a little bit today about, about Rousey is, you know, he wanted him to be more of a leader, take a more vocal role. It's really not his personality, but on the floor, he's one of these guys that you can get under his skin. He plays with a lot of emotion. 
And that was a concern for Steve Wojciechowski. We saw it show up a little bit in the last game against Vermont. Well, when you're a, a smaller guard like Andrew Rousey, you've been fighting all your life. and You play with a chip on your shoulder. And a lot of times it's good. 90% of the times it's good. But those, that 10% is when he gets in trouble. And, and so Andrew Rousey trying to calm down a little bit. Marquette understands who they have in a teammate. And again, most of the time you like that chip on your shoulder, but sometimes it gets him in trouble. Took him out of the starting lineup for the last game as Davidson hits a free throw. And so Rousey, by the way, the double technical puts a second foul on Rousey, who goes to the bench. Mays picks up the other tee, and Mays will head to the bench as well. And Rousey will cool the Jets with two fouls, probably for a good chunk of the rest of this first half. And Davison hits a couple of free throws. Well, as you saw the graphic, Andrew Rousey had 10 assists last game versus Vermont. So he's an integral part of setting up this offense. And so with him being out. Offensive foul. Going the other way, Marcus Howard pushes off. Davison's been right in the middle of both of these. That's the second for Marcus Howard. And Davison comes back and gets in position and does a great job of selling the call. There was a, a little bit of contact, but that young man's got some, a drama major in his, in his future. <laughs> well, he has uh, been able to hang a couple of fouls on the guards as Iverson is now fouled. Jamal Kane getting his first run of the game, got a hand on the wrist of Iverson. What started as a string for Marquette with their guard play because of the injuries to the Badgers, level the playing field a little bit now with Howard two fouls, Rousey with two fouls. Brentzel's coming back in for TJ Schlund. Well, when you look at Wisconsin, or excuse me, when you look at Marquette, Kane and Elliott are going to be fantastic players, but they're freshmen. They're young. Got a foul on Wisconsin on Ethan Harris, which will be his first. So the second team foul for Wisconsin. Marquette has five team fouls. One of your keys before the game was getting to the free throw line if you're the Wisconsin Badgers, and they're in a position to do that with foul trouble. Yeah, you have to because with Kobe King out and Demetrius Trice, two guys that are really your better guys on the, on the floor. Howard gets it to go and draws the foul. A chance at three for Marcus Howard. Watch the concentration and the strength on this finish. There's the bump. Gets hit in the head. He squares his shoulders up, Brian. He is, we don't talk enough about his strength. This is young man is really well built. So for Howard, that is 27 consecutive free throws made this season. Going back to last season, he's made 36 in a row at the charity stripe. I waited till after he shot that. I saw you look at me that way. He said, don't do it. Bardo said, don't say it. But he is money from the free throw line. He gets a lot of points there. Well, the good ones aren't affected by the, the broadcast of Jinx. <laughs> Reavers with a new haircut. And Reavers comes up empty. Iverson keeps it alive. Ends up in the hands of Pritzel. Hap's got it on the block. And a tough pass to Iverson. And now Wisconsin will try to get it organized. Boy, a mismatch possession. It's going to end up with foul shots for Ethan Hap. Wisconsin getting it in the ground, playing it dirty. And the Badgers will have free throws coming up when we continue from the Cole Center. Well, Marcus Howard continues to be a bright spot for the Marquette Golden Eagles. How about his record-setting performance against Chicago State? You called that game. Yeah, he was fantastic. And here's the thing, he doesn't force a lot of shots. I was there for Vermont as well, and Brian, it's like typically players that score the way that he does, they're volume shooters, not Marcus Howard. Very, very efficient. Howard with 34 points on 6 of 11 shooting behind the arc against Vermont. Made those six threes, also made all six of his free throws as Ethan Happ misses the first free throw. And those 11 three-pointers made against Chicago State. Last year, Howard led the nation in three-point percentage, set a freshman record nationally. And in this game last year, it was a, one of his early breakout games in this rivalry matchup. Howard dropped 22 on the Badgers in their matchup last season in Milwaukee. 
Elliott kicks it. Here's Hauser. Gives it up, and Howard gets it organized. Howard on the take. Little floater is blocked by Reavers. I like this young player, Reavers. He's going to be quite a player for the Badgers. Doesn't shy away from contact. He's not strong enough yet, but he'll get there. Half gets it deep. Held is on him. Kicks it to Iverson for three. And Howard pulls down the rebound. Howard shifty. Elliott on the tape. And now Hauser camping on the three-point line. Hits it. See when Marquette has freshmen and Kane and Elliott that are willing to make the extra pass to these wonderful shooters. That's why Hauser's wide open. Marquette really clicking on all cylinders. Hauser coming off a big game against Vermont as well. That was a 91-81 win for Marquette on Tuesday. Hauser had 17 in that game. Another turnover. Hauser jumps the lane, gets a steal, fires up another three. And Sam Hauser back-to-back -back trips with three-pointers. And the Marquette Golden Eagles are rolling right now. Oh, and you have a, your power forward that can push it up, pull for three, nothing but cotton, and feeling good. All right, listen up. Out on that field today, you will be ready for anything. And I want you to always remember, this is the greatest team you will ever be part of. And when they're asked, what did you do to make a difference in the world? They can say, I became a soldier. Sam Hauser with a couple of threes. The kid from Spash, Stevens Point Area High School, with a little splash here at the Cole Center. This is a floor he is very familiar with. Teaming up with his brother Joey at Stevens Point, a couple of state championships for those two. Joey coming to Marquette next year. He's already committed. One of the great players in the country at the prep level. That's a travel turnover, Wisconsin. Points off turnovers for Marquette. 12 nothing at this point, trying to add to it. And that all-important third option for the Golden Eagles. And you know what? Here's the thing. Sam Hauser doesn't get enough credit for how good he really is. He touches so many areas of the game. He's so solid. Defender, rebounder, coach on the floor. He's not a demonstrative guy, but he's a leader in his own right. And with his body, does a lot of things. Here's Davison with the turnover. He gets it on the steal and he finishes at the rim. Much needed bucket for Wisconsin. You know, that last play where Pritzel didn't take the wide-open shot and result in a turnover for Ethan Happ is all you need to know about the mindset collectively of the Badgers, just lacking confidence. And in desperate need of a secondary score, we talk about the third option for Marquette. Wisconsin is searching for that second option as Hauser comes up short. Davison comes away with a rebound. I still like that shot by Hauser. He's got the advantage in that situation. And Davison so adept at drawing fouls. One freshman to another as Jamal Kane picks up the foul. Second foul on Kane, the 6'7 freshman. And Davison is headed to the line. Now we've got 9.08 remaining in this first half. And the Badgers are in the bonus the rest of the way. And that's what the Badgers need to do. When you're a team that's struggling, you're, you're missing two important players you've got to generate points different ways and this is one way they can do so brad davison gets a call as the starting point guard today with dimitri trice out with a foot injury rousey is coming back in drawing some booze from this wisconsin crowd rousey enters the game with two fouls so you got rousey and Howard both on the floor together with two fouls and 9.08 remaining. Davidson hits the two free throws. If I'm the Wisconsin Badger fans, I don't, I don't boo him. I don't boo Andrew Rouse. He likes that. That feeds into his personality. Rousey hit with a technical foul for his second. Tried to dump it off. He turns it over. That's Davidson once again. He's taking on Howard. Strong to the basket. Gets the friendly bounce. Everything good for Wisconsin has come through that guy right there, Brad Davison. Well, you see him. He's pumping the crowd up. He's pumping his teammates up. This guy's a gamer.
Ramsey gets it blocked by Iverson. Right into the hands of Hauser. Shot clock at nine. Howard, little step back three, long range. Oh Bomb goodness. is good. And Howard <laughs> quiets <laughs> down the crowd. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I love covering Marquette. When these guys get in trouble, they can outshoot trouble. It, not a lot of teams in America can do that. See if Wisconsin has an answer here. They need something good in sustained fashion here for a while. They are down big early. And Davison draws the foul again. Third foul on Andrew Rousey. Timeout on the floor. Free throws coming. And Rousey in foul trouble. However, Marquette looking good, getting all they want. Hey, when you can shoot it like this, over Ethan Happen, anybody else, why not? Thirty-one seventeen, Marquette having their way against the Wisconsin Badgers. Beautiful state capital on a beautiful Saturday. A little snow cover as well in Madison. Moments ago, we listened in on Steve Wojciechowski in the Marquette huddle. Take care of the basketball. The ball has got to get the ball. And we got to value it. That on this end, we got to play our defense hard without balance. Well, Coach Wojciechowski not pleased with the last two turnovers, Brian. The live ball variety resulting in Davison being able to get two layups and get the crowd back into the game. Only three turnovers here in the first half, but those last two he's concerned about. Well, that's a big break there as Davison misses two free throws. He has scored the last six points for Wisconsin. 31-17. Marquette is six of seven from behind the three-point line, and they've made five consecutive threes. Howard on the take, little floater is good. That's a new element to his game this season that he's added so well. Every guard needs a floater. If you're going to get into the paint and go up amongst, amongst the trees, you need an opportunity to get it off without contact. Marcus Howard is so good at mixing his game up. Talked to Steve Wojciechowski about that. He said he, he needed it because he was finding out fast coming from high school. A shot hits a three. So he's made two. This one actually counts. T.J. Schlunt. But Wojo talking about Howard says, well, after you find out you go into the paint, you end up on the on your backside every time and maybe turning the ball over. You got to come up with something to counter that. And Howard, wow, what a shot. Quick release delivers another long range missile for Marquette. I'm telling you, man, this guy is one of the better guards in the United States in all of the college games. And I don't know why he's not getting enough love because I haven't seen many guys that can go off the bounce or catch and shoot as well as Marcus Howard. Howard has scored the last eight, and Howard has, in 12 minutes, scored 16 points on six of eight shooting. Aleem Ford steps inside the line, too strong. Adam pulls down the board. Howard trying to stretch this lead out. It is at 16, could be 19. And he misses the three, half with the rebound. And you gotta let him take it. I mean, give him the green light, he was feeling it. Trying to put the knockout punch against Wisconsin. Davidson fakes on the three, goes to the hole. No, air ball. And it's going to be out of bounds off of Marquette and Greg Elliott. Back to Howard. Watch how hard Marcus Howard runs off of these screens. And he's going to come really fast. The slunt is running full speed. Doesn't matter. His feet are still moving. Howard goes to the hole with the floater. And then this is just pretty here. Sets up. You don't give him any space. And if you do, that's the end result. Howard's hit three threes for 16 points. Here's Davison, a three, and he hits. Something to cheer about here at the Kohl Center as Brad Davison cuts the deficit to 13. This crowd trying to get into it a little bit. The shooting has been lights out for Marquette. They've made as many threes as they have twos in this game. And up to the hole, no, half of the rebound. That's a good ball handler for a big man. He kicks it out to Pritzel. Half with Hauser on him, the left-handed hook. No, gets his own, puts it back. Nice aggressiveness by Ethan Half. Forcing the issue, 
And the Cole Center trying to get into it. Deficit is 11 for Wisconsin. Marquette with the ball and the lead. Trying to add to it. Just under five minutes. Howard turns a corner. Taking on Reavers now. Another rejection. That's twice that a Marquette guard has been blocked. Wisconsin trying to cash it in. Davison picks up his dribble now. Swing offense in play for Greg Gard. Reavers catches it deep. And Reavers too strong off the window. That's going to be off of Adam. That'll be Wisconsin ball. New shot clock. I like Nate Reavers. I'm telling you, he's got it. It's a little thin right now up front, but he is, he might be trying to swing a 20-pound anvil. It might only be five, Brian, but he's swinging it. <laughs> well, he sat the first five games thinking he might take a red shirt. Once he evaluated the rotations, the potential playing time, he's going to be a big part of this rotation now. So after sitting out the first five, evaluating whether to take a red shirt or not, he's in there as a true freshman. And it's just a different look for Wisconsin. They're relying so heavily on their freshmen. Not something you've seen a lot of in their program history. That's going to be a foul underneath. I believe they're going to get Reavers on this one. And Reavers under the basket. Now Dimitri Trice. He's going to be interesting a couple of days here with a foot injury. And the Wisconsin staff telling us, Stephen, it, it could be a couple of weeks. It could be a season. We just don't know. It, He's got a foot injury that's going to need some time, get some swelling down to find out the extent of this injury. And then Kobe King goes down in the last 15 minutes of practice yesterday with a knee injury. Yeah, that's so unfortunate because Demetri Trice, the starting point guard, obviously his importance. But Kobe King, in my opinion, next to Brad Davidson, was playing as well as any player coming on and starting to get comfortable in the system. Hauser, quick release on the catch and shoot. Too strong. Davison with a rebound. I figure Davison's going to have to log a lot of minutes. He and Ethan have. They're going to be 30 plus for sure. Pritzel wide open as Howard fell down. And Pritzel, no. Reavers the board. Reavers goes up. Blocked by John. Howard comes away with it. Rick Gard might blow a gasket on this play here. Tough exchange resulted in the ball for Marquette. And they get a timeout with Howard surrounded. All right, Rob, thanks. It is an 11 point Marquette lead, this rivalry game. These two programs separated by 75 miles. Let's get into Ethan Happ a little bit. What have you seen, Steven? Uh, he's seen multiple bodies every time he catches the basketball. Hasn't been poor this half, seven points four rebounds, but he has three turnovers, and a lot of that is because Marquette is paying so much attention to him that every time he gets the basketball, he's either got to go quick, which makes him speed up and turn the ball over, or he's got to get it out of his hands. Good job by Marquette, making him see multiple players every time he catches. Now Marquette has pushed their lead to 17. They're up 11 with the ball. Three and a half left, and Howard comes up short. There's half with the rebound. Does Wisconsin have a run at him? to get this back to single digits and get back in this game before the end of the half. I think they do, Brian, and here's the thing. When, when you look at the score right now, they're down 11, but Marquette is 7 to 10 from three. So Wisconsin's not in bad shape. If they score here, get under that psychological barrier of double figures, it could be a ball game. Schlant travels with it. Turnover, Wisconsin. Uncharacteristic of the Badgers who have turned it over now six times. You see the numbers for Ethan Happ with seven and five right now. He has turned it over three times, but a lot of that, to your point, comes with the traps, and he's trying to make those extra passes. He's carrying a lot of this burden yes. of the Wisconsin offense because of the lack of that secondary score right now. Yep. And see, Kobe King can go get his own shot, and that's what Mark, uh, Wisconsin needs right now. Theo John connects on the other end. That snaps a run for Marquette. They had missed their last five field goal attempts. Howard and Hauser combining to score the last 17 before John hits that little jumper in the lane. Pretzel release. Splash. That's big. I mean, because he didn't shoot that wide open look along the baseline. He came right out of the game. So now he knows if he's in the game, he gets a look. He better let it fly. 
I thought Pretzel had knocked a tooth out when I saw him before the game. That's actually a mouthpiece. It's got a little logo on the front there. Here's Howard trying to answer. Cannot. Came flying high for the board and a block by Hap. And they'll tie it up. Possession arrow belongs to Marquette. Jamal Kane and Greg Elliott, these two freshmen. I tell you what, they're going to be fun to watch in Milwaukee the next three plus seasons. That, that's a man sized rebound. And you see, he might be 200 pounds soaking wet. When he gets in the weight room, he's going to be tough. They got some talent on the way, too. Thurl Bailey's son yes. is on his way. And Sam Hauser's little brother, Joey, who's one of the top high school players in the country. This is going to be a team to be reckoned with in years to come. And Marquette got a new arena opening up as well next year. Hauser kicks it. And Kane will deliver the three ball. Jamal Kane, who doesn't shoot many threes, he's made just five this season. Number six puts Marquette up 41 28. Minute and a half to go in this first half. Badgers trying to withstand this blitz by the Golden Eagles. Wow, half gets oh, to Reavers and John meets him at the rim. Now on transition, Howard to the corner. Kane will fire another. And Reavers and Happ ends up in the hands of Hat. Woo, Theo John. <laughs> And Jamal Kane, the two freshmen, making a big impact here in the first half. Half travels. John pulled the chair. Half didn't feel the contact, and he walks with it. Thought Nate Reavers was going to have a, a poster here, and Theo John said, not on my watch. Two freshmen meeting at the summit. We've never had, and we, like I said, we've, we've done this game a few years, never had this many freshmen involved with these two programs in a game like this. You're right. Both, both programs have kind of gotten old, especially Wisconsin with their four senior starters last season. Four turnover, by the way, for Ethan Happ. We're under a minute to go. Davison working on Hauser. Shot clock down to 11. The dangerous Howard with the ball. And a mismatch with Reavers on it, but Reavers gets another block. Second time. Davison pushes it. Pritzel's got it. Runs into traffic, and boy, Wisconsin lets a golden opportunity get by in transition. I thought Davison held that ball too long. Could have gotten it to Pritzel a little bit sooner. And Pritzel, a good athlete, he could have brought that one home and got the crowd into it. So a baseline out of bounds. Shot clock at 23. And up top, and half with a catch and a finish. The Great whole, catch. The whole Marquette team screamed loud, and they still couldn't stop the play. Got a chance at a two-for-one with that quick basket by Wisconsin. Timeout, Steve Wojciechowski. 11-point game once again. Wojo will draw one up. About six seconds separating shot clock and game clock. And what was a lead at 17, Wisconsin's been able to wrestle it back to 11. Really good execution here. Here's Khalil Iverson. He's going to come and set a screen on Theo John. And all he can have is going to do is run to the rim. They're utilizing the freshman, Jamal Kane. He's not been in this situation much. You see his slow reaction resulting in an open layup for Ethan Happ. That's good execution and taking advantage of the freshman. Every time we see Ethan Happ, all these years, he's been such a great player and has turned himself into a great player, an All-America candidate. One thing jumps off at you right away when you watch him is his hands, a big guy that has great hands. He leads this Wisconsin team in steals, did last year. He's second this year. He's a guy that can force turnovers and make catches like that. He's impressive. Yes, he is. And, and you said it earlier, doing so much for his team, only major conference player to average 16 points, eight rebounds, and three assists. Does so much for this Badger ball club. Leads the Badgers in all three of those categories. He's over 1,000 points in his career as well. And that is a foul on Adam. An offensive foul is going to give the ball back to Wisconsin and a chance to get it to single digits going into the halftime break. And Brad Davison got hit on that injured shoulder and a little bit of grimace, but that football background would not allow him to show 
the motion or pain on his face. I know that would hurt a little bit. Star quarterback, Maple Grove, Minnesota, had a chance to play football at the next level. Wanted to shoot hoops. Sakar Adam blocked him good, and you saw him right there. He's back trying to get his composure. He's a tough freshman right here, and his demeanor might make him the mayor of Madison, Wisconsin, before it's all said. Yeah, he's going to get under a lot of skin in the Big Ten over his four years. Three-point shooters are on the floor. The press is on. No real ball handlers for Wisconsin. Remember, they're down two guards. Davidson on the take, and he's fouled on the floor. No shot. Point of emphasis this year, the freedom of movement. And Davison draws another foul. They are... Adam picks up his second foul. And Davison will go to the line to shoot two in the double bonus. That was such a great decision by Marquette to full court pressure in that situation. Totally caught Wisconsin off guard. It's a 10 point game. Davison has a chance to get it to single digits. Marquette will have two seconds to get a shot up. And Davison hits both free throws. Davison in 20 minutes, now 13 points. He's hit one three. Full court pressure for Wisconsin. Elliott fires, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. Both teams will have a lot to discuss in the halftime locker room. Wojo and the Golden Eagles were up 17. They go to the break up nine as Wisconsin finishes on a 12-5 run to end the half. How about eight three-pointers from Marquette? Eight for 14 from behind the arc. And Marcus Howard with 16 points. Coming up, it's the FS1 College Hoops Halftime Report. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, Jimmy Jackson. They've got it all for you from Los Angeles right after this. One of the great rivalries in college basketball, Marquette and Wisconsin. Goes back 100 years. They started playing these games in 1917. The modern day version, two beat up programs right now. Marcus Howard was fantastic in the first half, but the Badgers, Stephen Bardo, on a 12-5 run to end the half, withstanding some terrific three-point shooting by Marquette. We got a ball game again. Yeah, we do. They, the Wisconsin Badgers were able to score the basketball from the free throw line. Weren't very good from the field, but got back into the game from the free throw line, got their defense set, and got a few stops. And so now we got a ball game. Well, we'll see how the Badgers go. Remember, the down two guards, the two injuries to Demetric Trice and Kobe King, and Marquette trying to win on the road. They've won three of the last five in this matchup. And Marcus Howard continues to prove that he is one of the best guards in the country in college basketball. I totally agree. And, you know, once again, being very efficient, 6 of 13 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3. And this is what he's really worked on, that little floater and runner that virtually makes him unstoppable because you can't take away everything. you got to give up something, and whatever you do, he takes. Well, Marcus and his older brother, Jordan, who plays at Central Arkansas, are lighting it up this year. His older brother, Jordan, averaging nearly 24 a game for Central Arkansas. Marcus, in his sophomore season, over 22 and he is leading the Big East Conference in scoring. Here we go with Wisconsin and the first possession as we start the second half. It is a nine-point game, and it is Brandon Pretzel. A couple of threes for Pretzel. This is a player that Wisconsin is desperate to try to get going, especially now shorthanded in the backcourt. He is a deadly shooter, but hasn't really shown it in games yet. Adam, not there. Rebound pulled down by Ford. I like that move by Sakar Adam. He, high percentage going towards the rim just didn't fall for him. Wisconsin now on a 15-5 run. Oh! And Iverson looking for a call, didn't get it. Help gets the rebound. Howard in transition. Howard probing with Pritzel on him. Good defense by Wisconsin. Yeah, good job by rotating defensively. 
Howard now with Iverson on a little floater, and it'll be an offensive foul as Davison collects the charge. That is number three on Marcus Howard. Remember, Rousey has three as well. That's why he's not in the starting lineup to begin this second half. And now Howard picks up number three. Uh, I was, yeah, see, I, I didn't agree with that call. Pat Driscoll's one of the best we have in the game. I did not think uh, Davidson was set that situation. That's a tough break for Marquette. So Rousey comes back in. He'll play with the three fouls as Howard sits. And with Iverson. Iverson's got a new paint. And Iverson cannot get those to go. I like what Sakar Anam is doing defensively to Khalid Iverson. Iverson tries to be a bulldog, but Sakar Anam too strong for that. See how Marquette will go with Howard on the bench. Rousey in the first half in nine minutes had six points. Help gets a deep shot clock's now at six. Help trying to fight for some space, gets a little left-handed roll. Matt Helm, those are bonus points for Marquette. Doesn't score a lot, but does a lot of the dirty work. Good job of taking his time because he had the height advantage. He knows all about this rivalry. He's a Wisconsin kid from Nina, Wisconsin. The 6'10 junior Matt Helm scores just over five points per game. He's done a terrific job defensively on Ethan Happ today. Ford and Davison, the two freshmen in the starting lineup. Davison lost the handle. Davison got to put up a prayer, and the shot clock will expire. Marquette basketball. Good defensive discipline there by Marquette. Davison does a really good job of drawing the defense off their feet. That time, Sam Hauser stayed solid. That's the eighth turnover for Wisconsin. The Badgers only turn it over 10 a game as Rousey drops a long-range ball. Andrew Rousey hits his third three, has not missed from behind the arc. Three for three. Rousey now with nine. Good job here. Trying to post up Revan Pritzel. They didn't get it in there, but I like the approach by Wisconsin. Iverson on the ISO, kicks it out. Davison gets it right back to him. Little give and go. And Davison is fouled on his way to the hole. And they're going to call the foul on Greg Elliott, who got him from behind. First foul for Elliott. And Davison again wreaking havoc. Goes back to the free throw line. Davison was six for eight from the free throw line of the first half. We saw something that we hadn't seen Wisconsin do all game long. Davison hits the post and then he cuts towards the basket. The defense turns their head. Greg Elliott, they take Badgers taking advantage of these freshmen on defense. He gets to the basket, gets two free throw opportunities. And his third miss. Seven for ten from the line is Davison. Ten point game, Marquette with the ball and the lead. Rousey just hit a three last possession. Wants it back. And a quick trigger for Rousey. That one short. Iverson with a rebound. Marquette started this game by making seven of their first eight three pointers. They had five in a row at one point. They're two out of seven since that time. As half, man, that is funny. Ethan Half right in his wheelhouse in the lane. Oh, that was a great job by the Badgers, spacing the floor and popping half to the post at the right time where he could get it without the double team. Half has 11. He's pushing his way toward a double double. 11.6 rebounds. Trying to split the double team. It's half of those great hands with the pick. And half's going all the way. He scores. Ethan Half with the steal and the finish in transition. I'll tell you what, man, Rousey and Howard, I'm smiling over here because Rousey knows they're playing it for the three-point line. He puts the Jets up, gets past half off the glass. Beautiful move. Pushes the lead from six to eight. 
Davison posted up Elliott. And that is a travel. Turnover Wisconsin. That is their ninth. Will take us to the timeout. But Ethan Happ starting to announce his presence of authority here. Doing a great job getting into the passing lanes. Comes up with the rock and moves it easily to the rim. And watch how Rousey puts the burners on, gets past, and the teardrop off the glass. Welcome back to Madison as Marquette enjoys an eight-point lead. Let's look at Ethan Happ and how the swing offense can do a lot of things. Ethan Happ typically catches the ball on the block, but watch how they bring him back to the middle right here where the double team can't come. And there's great floor spacing and boom, pop him in the middle. There's no double team. He goes one-on-one -on -one against Matt Hill. That's a good job of Wisconsin adjusting to the Marquette defense. Leads the Badgers in those three categories. Only player in the nation to lead the Badgers or to lead their team in those three categories. Marquette had a 17-point lead the first 10 minutes of the game as Rousey left wide open. And Rousey talking a little trash, looking at some of the Wisconsin fans. <laughs> He has that part in him that will get under the skin of his opponent. He and Howard. No doubt about it. And Wisconsin continues to switch on defense. And Marquette has been very patient against that. He's been able to find really good shots as a result. Rousey has scored the last eight points for Marquette. Wisconsin with the shot clock at six. We'll have it side out. Back to Rousey. Well, watch here. Miscommunication defensively. You can't leave the hottest shooter on the floor wide open. And Rousey hitting that three against the dome. He's made four out of five from behind the arc. These are important minutes right here for Rousey. Remember, Marcus Howard's on the bench with three fouls. And Rousey's playing with three fouls. And yet Wojo, with this move with Rousey, able to withstand some of this foul trouble. Here's Hap on the take. Gets a foul and gets the bucket. Ethan Hap somehow got it to the rim. And a chance at a three-point trip down the floor with a shot clock winding down. Yeah, really good set play. There's nobody in sight. Everybody clears out above the three-point line, allowing Ethan Hap with a pretty reverse. Hap a 62% free throw shooter. That one misses badly. So the Badgers settled for two, but the shot clock was at the end, and it's back to single digits. Look at the free throw attempts and the discrepancy between the two. Rousey running the show with Howard on the bench. You figured Howard will be coming back soon. And Reavers fouls Rousey. He'll go to the line to shoot three. Andrew Rousey does that better than any player in college basketball. He gets at least one of those every single game because you have to stay at home on his three-point shot. If he shot fakes, it's natural for younger players, especially with Nate Reavers out there on an island. Those bigs don't like to cover that three. Unfamiliar territory, and Rousey takes advantage. Well, Marquette has only gotten to the line once today. That was to cap off the three-point possession, but you talk about Andrew Rousey and what he does among active players, he has made the most three-pointers right now in college basketball. Rousey transferring in. 15 points now. His first free throw is good. Rousey averages seven free throw attempts per game. Think and about in, that. In nine games prior to today, he had 63 free throw attempts. That would be the James Harden equivalent of the college game getting to the line. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up, Brian, because a lot of college players want to get away from contact. He, em he embraces contact because he's so good at the free throw line. He, he is a total player. And between him and Marcus Howard, best shooting backcourt in America. Rousey scored the last 11 for Marquette. He has pushed the lead to 12. Looking for Hat. Catches it deep with the left hand. Ethan Hat absorbing the contact and scoring at the basket. Ethan Hat now with 17 points. Has six rebounds, a couple of assists as well. Hat and Rousey have been the story here for their two teams. Here's Hauser. 
And Hauser with all that length. Sam Hauser at 6'8 found himself wide open in the lane. His theme song's to be smooth operated by Sade <laughs> because he is, he doesn't get rushed. He's smooth with it, takes advantage of whatever the, the defense is giving him. Hauser has started all 11 for Marquette this year. Here's Davidson, a long three. Right on line, but too long. Now, off the miss. Rousey pushing it. Rousey spins. High off the window. No. Adam with a rebound, and he is fouled. Sakar Adam will go to the free throw line. Rousey pushing the tempo after the three-point miss. Halfwood's a little disappointed right now. And you got a situation where this is a critical juncture. Where if Wisconsin can close this gap and get into single digits, this becomes a tighter game for Marquette. But Marquette is such a good shooting team. Anytime you have a lapse, they can take advantage. Charlie Thomas will check in as Hap will go to the bench. By the way, they put that foul on Pritzel, so Hap out for a breather. He has just the one foul. Charles Thomas didn't even play against Temple. He's got some a few DNPs here lately and finally getting some time on the floor for Wisconsin. It is a 14-point lead. Marcus Howard returns with three fouls. And so here's the difference, Brian. Marquette takes out a player and brings in Marcus Howard. Wisconsin takes out their best player in Ethan Happ, and they bring in a guy in Thomas, as you said, who didn't even play last game. So this is the difference in the level that he's teaching go to off the bench. Well, Brevin Pritzel got it up to the rim, had a pretty decent look, but can't convert there. And Marquette can add to their lead. Rousey, Howard on the floor together. And the dynamic Rousey, wow, he got fouled. And finally, the whistle comes. Charles Thomas got him on the wrist. And Rousey back to the line. So Stephen, when Howard went to the bench with three fouls, Marquette not only withstands Howard on the bench, they actually thrive. They went on a 12-4 run. Yep, and, and so when you, I point to this man right here, Andrew Rousey is the biggest reason. He's calmed down after that technical foul. I'm sure at halftime there was some paint that came off the walls of Steve Wojciechowski getting on his case about that. He's responded in, in the right manner. And I want young players, both young women and men, to watch this, that the game is ever-changing. So you might make a mistake. Do not hang your head, come back and play. That's what we're seeing from Andrew Rousey. Next best decision, right? Next best move. That's right. And if there's any coach who can understand the mindset of an Andrew Rousey and Steve Wojciechowski who channeled all that fiery attitude into a positive for the Duke Blue Devils all those years. Wisconsin needing an answer, and they get an answer from a lead forward. Redshirt freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. He and Dimitri Trice were teammates at the IMG Academy. His teammate here in Wisconsin now is injured. Trice, the starting point guard, is out, along with Kobe King. 14-point lead. Rousey's been handling it well. Adam on the take. Pritzel right there with him. And Adam rebound Charles Thomas solid defensive possession that time by Wisconsin they cut down all the open looks for Sakar and him into something he doesn't like doing going with his offhand TJ Schlund on the floor there's a turnover that's a steal by Kane on the entry pass very uncharacteristic a ton of turnovers wow Rousey with a little crossover gets to the hole he is fouled and back to the line he will go Timeout on the floor. Free throws coming for Marquette. Trying to stretch that lead. They're up 14. Marquette up 14. They have the ball. Free throws coming for the Golden Eagles. Moment to go. Let's listen to Steve Wojciechowski in the huddle. On the defensive end, we need to keep our defense tight. When Hap has the ball, the last time he got it, we left our big guy on an island. Here's what he's talking about. We diagrammed this earlier, how Wisconsin is adjusting to the way that Marquette was double teaming half, so they bring him into the paint. What Steve Wojciechowski knows is that Wisconsin shoots 33% from three-point line. So it's better for them defensively to 
give the three-point line up and make Hap kick it out, Brian, as opposed to letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Hap and Rousey have been the big scorers here in the second half. Hap has eight for Wisconsin. Rousey now with 15 in the second half for Marquette. He has played huge minutes with three fouls nonetheless. 16-6 run now for Marquette. Rousey has 12 to 16. Brad Davison back on the floor for Wisconsin. Hap gives it to Ford. And Ford with a hot pass that Iverson cannot handle. And yet another turnover for Wisconsin. That is their 11th. And Ford was trying to make the tough play. He should have swung to Schlunt, who was wide open on the three-point line, that has had success there today. But he hesitated and tried to make the tough pass, resulting to a turnover. I thought you handled the swung to Schlunt very well. That was excellent. <laughs> Here's Rousey for three. Oh, and Andrew Rousey hits another one. Rousey time has arrived here at the Cole Center. 18 second half points for Andrew Rousey. He's got 24 for the game. Rousey had a 40 point game in his college career. And he is hitting on all cylinders right now in Madison. What was once a six point lead for Marquette, they've expanded it to 19, and this guy has been in the middle of all of it, Stephen. Well, you, you talk about a 19 to 6 run in favor of Marquette. Rousey has 15 of those 19 points in this run. He has taken over this game, he's taken advantage of the miscommunication on the defensive end, and that's a pretty read right there. Stop and go, come back off of the screen playing with ultimate confidence right now. Rousey's 18 second half points. He has outscored the entire Wisconsin team in the second half, 18-14. And Wisconsin in desperate need of a run here, down 19 points with the ball, coming out of the timeout. Shot clock down to four. Davison goes by Rousey. Davison gets to the hole and finishes. A little finger roll from the freshman. Oh, Steve Wojciechowski is beside himself on the sideline. You cannot allow that to happen. Everybody knows there's four seconds left. You've got to converge on the ball him. Let's see if they keep calling Rousey's number. Why wouldn't you? There's a little give and go action. McCain to help. Well done. The two guys you are not paying attention to, and Howard and Rousey on the floor, and they deliver with a little two-man game. Matt Hill is three or four from the field, so when he's gotten his opportunity, he's been gold. 13-4 run for Marquette. They keep stretching the lead. Biggest lead of the game. That one knocked out of the hands of Davison. They're going to get a foul on they get there. Rousey. Like what I saw from Sam Hauser, he gets in Rousey's face telling him something defensively. That's the second time he's been able to drive past Rousey. Yeah, they did give that to Rousey. Could have gone to Helt as well, but Rousey picks up number four, and he'll be headed to the bench here. What an impressive window of playing time for Andrew Rousey. And Hauser trying to calm him down. I mean, he, look, there's no other way to put it. He is a dynamic scorer, but he is a high-maintenance player as well because you have to constantly stay on him. But the thing that makes him great is also the thing that can get him in trouble at times. That's true. And, you know, I think that Marquette will take it because he's no playing. question. <laughs> he can shoot it, and he can create as well as any guard in the league. And here, here's the thing. On this floor, they've seen a player that's similar to Andrew Rouse. Yeah. His name is J.P. Makura that's right. from Xavier. And he was doing very similar things in terms of agitating the opponent. But that young man right there, I, I, I take him on my team. He's a, that's a great call. There's so much good with it. You're yes. willing to put up with some of the bad. That's right. And he can get you in some trouble. But you made a great point earlier. They were booing Rousey in the first half here at the Cole Center. And since they booed him, he has lit it up as Howard now goes to the hole off the window. So fast. And here's where Wisconsin's not going to get a break because Rousey goes to the bench, and now Marcus Howard is going to take over. And he's going to be aggressive every time he touches. Cap gets it inside, gives it up to Davison. Davison working inside. No. Well, there is a lot at the rim that Wisconsin is not getting. I mean, they're getting their shot, but they're not converting. Other than Ethan Half, they're having a hard time in there. And I think, you know, when you, you talk about 
the players that are missing. Demetri Trice, Kobe King at 6'4", 200 plus, would be able to go in and finish among the trees if he was available. Tough pass, ends up in the hands of Mace. And now Hap, and he's fouled on the floor. He goes, help, doing all he can to hang in there with Ethan Hap. Never afraid to stick his nose in there as Matt Held. You can see the shiner under his left eye. Uh, and I, I also, you know, you're guarding the premier big man in the, in the country. And Ethan Happ is as good as they come. Good effort by Howard trying to save that one. Shot clock at 18, Wisconsin ball. Matt Held now a junior. Gives him... A little over five points, a little shy of five rebounds. Did have an eight-point game against Vermont. He's an excellent free-throw shooter as well. Davison, tough three, had a block. No oh, foul. Elliott got him on the hand. And it's going to be a three-shot foul for Brad Davison. Well, those freshmen are so eager to please, but that, that eagerness makes them lose their defensive discipline. Right there. And then Davison kicks his legs out. <laughs> He'll have days like that. Somewhere Reggie Miller says, oh, man, I love that. <laughs> That's right. Good work. Yep. Davison has been at the line now 13 times. He's 10 for 13 from the free throw line. And he now has 20 points. Every time you think Marquette... He's going to put the foot down on the Badgers. Wisconsin answers with a little bit of a run. They got it within six. At one point, Marquette led by 17 in the first half. And two out of three for Brad Davison. So it is a 17-point lead for Marquette with the ball. 8.20 remaining in regulation here. This long rivalry game. Marquette from downtown Milwaukee making the trip 75 miles here to Madison. Ends up in the hands of Davison. A couple of opportunities there for Marquette. Iverson to the hole. Oh, Khalil climbing the ladder and a two-handed jam. Still doing a great job going baseline. I caught Khalid earlier. I have to apologize. But Iverson giving them some boost here. They need this cold center crowd to come alive through this young Badgers to get some light. Trying to close down this deficit. Howard slips and falls. He travels. Turnover Marquette. Time out. Wisconsin trying to make one last push to get in this game. And the high-flying Khalil Iverson with a two-handed jam. It's a 15-point game. Tribute Classic presented by Geico tips off today. VCU taking on number 19, Seton Hall. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, the Wisconsin Badgers in a very difficult stretch of games. They're rebuilding their roster, minus the two guards today. But I can't imagine a tougher stretch of games, Stephen, for anybody else in the country than what Greg Gard has faced here recently. Well, three straight ranked opponents, and then you throw in a game between UCLA and Virginia, and it's it's been rough. And here's the thing. In six of the losses, four of those, they were within two points in the last two minutes of the game. So it's not like they're getting blown out like they did at home against Ohio State. They've been in the majority of these losses, so this is uncharacteristic for this Wisconsin program. Davidson, and now the ball ends up down in the hands of Hap, and that is a travel. Ethan Hap turns it over. The result of all of that for Wisconsin with this rebuilding roster, and remember losing a ton of production and a ton of talent from last year's team, is that they are four and six, and they're in danger of getting off to their worst start in the first 11 games for their program in the Cole Center era. And over the last 20 years, Hauser in the corner. Ooh, that is a big three for Marquette. It might be a put-away three for the Golden Eagles as they go up 18 now with under seven to go. Marcus Howard turns the corner. Ethan Hatt tries to help. Sam Hauser's space and makes a pay. Oh, oh, my oh, my goodness. He is right. Khalil Iverson with a spin and a jam. Oh, 
two thunder jams by Iverson. I'd like to see that early in the game, though. You know, make those type of plays early in the game before you get down too much. Two players hit the deck back to this nifty move by Iverson. Yikes. There's not many players in college basketball that can spin that quickly, gather, elevate, and throw it down like that. Iverson, very impressive. Explosive to the rim. He's a junior. He's out of Delaware. He's part of that class that Greg Gard is trying to get more out of. Iverson, guys like Charlie Thomas as well. Delaware, Ohio, I should say. Not the state of Delaware. Here's Pritzel for three. Howard on the rebound. Howard wants to move it. Marquette working the clock a little bit. Howard goes by Davison. And Howard with a little teardrop. He keeps his big game going. Rousey has 24. Howard now has 20. He's hit three threes in the game. Both playing with foul trouble as well. Half trying to find some room. Cannot. Pritzel on the take. Runs into health. No. And it's going to be Davison who runs that one down. A deflection. Oh, how about the hustle? by Adam and a foul on Sakar Adam but you love the effort there Adam's a Minneapolis guy Davison a Minneapolis guy I'm sure they've come across each other in the past yeah Davison knew he had to get to it and did a really good job of shielding his body to not let Adam get to the ball but Davison is exhausted I mean he's See him bent over trying to catch his breath, but I know that shoulder is bothering him. He's played 33 minutes already. Still five and a half to go in this game. Greg Gard told us it was going to be heavy minutes from Davison, Happ, and Iverson. They're all 30 plus minutes right now. Davison back to the free throw line. And cannot convert on the first of the one and one. So Marquette ball, no damage there for Marquette. Chance to push it to 20. Marquette at six and three. They're going to be a very interesting team in the Big East. There are days when they can beat anybody in the country as Davison with the deflection almost taking out our buddy Matt LePay over there, the great voice of the Badgers. I think that was Matt, although I couldn't quite see under the table, which is where he was. That's, that's him right there. The, the black sweater and the white shirt. Great voice of the Badgers. He doesn't go under the table here. He's, he's trying to help his guy out. Most damage is going to be done if Davidson hit that <laughs> table out of frustration. And I understand. He's left his body out here all game long. And the only he's got, he's, he has 20 points on the day, but the only shots that were not contested were those steals early in the first yeah. half when he got those laid. Good point. Davison, four of eight shooting. He's been to the line a lot. 11 made free throws in this game. He's been on the take often. Trying to work out the clock here. Reset to four on the shot clock. Our buddy Bo Borowski filled us in. He's adding, adding four seconds to the, both the shot clock and the game clock. So 5.06 left, eight on the shot clock. We appreciate the hospitality of our friendly official. Howard misses a three, Adam with a rebound. Boy, Adam is a blue collar guy, man. He does all the dirty work. And for a team of three point shooters and a spread offense, you need a guy like that to go clean it up. I agree. And I think he and Matt Hilt fit this team very well in terms of their personality. Hauser in and out. Reavers with the rebound. Right now, you're going to have to play a little uncharacteristically if you're Wisconsin. Yeah, look for some quick threes. Pretzel cannot hit. Kane pulls down the rebound. And Hap comes in, gets the steal, and he calls the timeout. Playing hard all the way through despite the score. Badgers down 18. They'll have the ball. Timeout, Greg Gard.
Marquette trying to prove the 7-3. They lead by 18 over their state rivals, the Wisconsin Badgers. And this has been a tough week at the top of the rankings, right? How about Kansas going down to Washington? And then the Gators, they've lost three straight, including, well, they have today, they have Cincinnati, but could be four in a row for Florida. Yeah, they lost to Loyola. And then you look at the Gophers, who lost to a very good Miami team, and they get blitzed at Nebraska. So really interesting week in college basketball. I think you could take those four, and if that ended up as a final four, you wouldn't bat an eye with those four who have sustained losses this week. And the remaining unbeatens around the nation. Duke still the top of the class at 11-0. TCU has played extremely well. And out of the Big East, Villanova continues to be the headliner in that conference. Beavers was partially blocked by Hauser. Hal cannot finish on the offensive board. And now Hell gets a piece of it, and the Badgers come away with nothing. That's an example of how the season has gone for Wisconsin. Opportunities, opportunities, just can't convert. Using the clock. Marquette trying to get out of here in their first true road game with a victory over Wisconsin. Marquette is going to have nine days off before their next game. Power for three. Look at him go. His range is forever. And Marcus Howard and Andrew Rousey have done just that. They have quieted down this crowd. Howard now with 23 to go along with Rousey's 24. Top two scorers in the Big East. There's not a lot of room to work in there. We've got to give Matt Held a lot of credit in this game. Wisconsin has gotten some looks inside, but Held has disrupted many of those looks. And you know what? He's disrupted them without foul. I mean, he builds a wall. He can block the shot when he gets the opportunity, but when he doesn't, when he's not in position, he just backs away and forces a, a, you know, the Badgers to convert, and they haven't been able to do so. We well, saw a big embrace there with Wojciechowski and his freshman Jamal Kane. Kane will exit with 20 good minutes in this game, had a couple of rebounds, two assists, scored three. Howard off one foot, comes up short, half with the rebound. Wisconsin has missed their last nine field goals. As half looking for Reavers. That might be a combination Greg Gard will use more moving forward. Oh, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I've liked Nate Reavers from the time that he came in against, I believe it was Milwaukee. That's and, right. You know, they were going to redshirt him, and they decided they needed to play him. He's a he's a confident young man. He's gonna have a big future here at 10 points against Ohio State answered that with 11 in their win against Penn State last week Rousey with a shot clock at five. I don't think he's giving the ball up. No, he is he gives it to hell who finishes so Rousey With a little dime there to get held on the scoreboard and believe me, Marquette's not going to let up. This is a rivalry game, ladies and gentlemen. It's not something that they're going to ease up and just, you know, pack up tent. They're trying to really put it on Wisconsin. Well, these are valuable minutes, too, as Pretzel gets the left-hander to go. These are valuable minutes here, Stephen. And you're looking at Wisconsin. We talked a little bit about it, but Kobe King goes down yesterday with a knee injury. That was in the final 15 minutes of practice. So, Greg Gard talking to us today, we didn't have any time to practice with these new rotations. They knew Dimitri Trice was going to be out. So, back to the drawing board for Greg Gard and the Badgers. they got a lot of work to do here. And they're going to drop to four and seven. Already one and one in conference. Hauser hits the three. They keep coming for Marquette. 14 made three pointers for the Golden Eagles. 14 out of 22. 64% from behind the arc. Reavers. He's got it. And a foul. And a chance at three for the Badgers. Well, this Wisconsin program is a proud one. A great tradition. And this is a little unusual for them and their fan base. You can see Ohio State and now Marquette come in with double digit victories. Rousey will exit. Good rally for him. 
Well, you can tell how much this means to Steve Wojciechowski. I don't even think he was on his third cup of coffee when we talked to him today, and he was already jacked up. He goes, this is a rivalry game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rousey's out with 24 points and playing a lot of those minutes with foul trouble in the second half. He had 18 in the second half. One minute remaining in the game. As we go under a minute. Marquette with nine days off, as I mentioned, their next game will be December 18th. And of note, that will be the return of Harry Froling to the Marquette lineup. The transfer from SMU is going to be eligible for the next game for Marquette. He is a big man who's going to give them a lot inside. Froling at 6'11". We'll have three years of eligibility. Marquette's going to change a little bit next time we see him. They will. Skilled big man, and it's going to take some time for him to, you know, get into game type shape and, and get into the flow. But he's going to be an integral part, especially in Big East play where it gets rough and tumble, especially in the paint area. Marquette will have you and I. They'll start conference play late December on the 27th against Xavier. Xavier won on this floor here against Wisconsin as well. And this is going to put the finishing touches on an emphatic victory for the Marquette Golden Eagles at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin. They'll have six consecutive home games. Coming up Thursday against Western Kentucky. They open up conference play against Indiana January 2nd. But one of the most lopsided losses in the long run of this rivalry. Greg Gard and the Badgers go to four and seven, their worst start through 11 games in this Cole Center era. Dynamic backcourt once again. Marquette, they look like they're getting real fast here for the Big East play. They do, and they're getting good contributions from their bench from their stellar freshmen, Elliott Kane. And Theo John, and when Harry Frawling comes in, they're serving notice to the rest of the Big East Conference. Rousey goes for 24, Howard with 23, Hauser 16. A dynamic backcourt, Stephen, open up our broadcast with. That's our final 82 63, Marquette to 7 and 3. Now let's send it to our FS1 College Hoop Studio. Here's Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, and Jim Jackson from Los Angeles.